I only have 15 seconds to tell you about Sport Clips haircuts. Sports on TV, original MVP haircut experience, and online check-in means you don't have to think about where to get your haircut ever again. Claim your spot today. Sportclips.com slash check-in. Golgan Wingo with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN2. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us via the Shell Penzoil performance line. And this hour, Mike, mm-hmm. of Golgan Wingo is brought to you by La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book at LQ.com and win at business. We got some big stuff coming up this yes, hour. We do. Mel Kuyper Jr. will join us in a little bit. He's just released his first NFL, released his first NFL mock draft, and he has a quarterback going first overall. Yes, he does. Josh Allen. The Josh of Wyoming. Allen. Uh, four quarterbacks in the first round, three in the top five picks. We'll get into that more and more. One thing I can definitely say, I was never in any of Mel Kuyper's mock drafts. Never? You sure? No, not not, sure? not when it was only a round or two. I no, was, I was hoping maybe he did a twelve round. I, well, no, you know, after my junior year, I was projected to be a higher pick, like a second round guy, and, and then I got, got hurt my hurt. my senior year and should have redshirted, but I didn't. You know, ancient history. Regrets, now, but I've I ended had up a going. Few, yeah, so I wasn't. Then again, I wasn't in many mock drafts uh, yeah. uh, after that season. And know what? Who who had the last laugh with a nine year NFL career? Yeah, well, I would have been a nice nine. I'd rather have had a nine year career as a second rounder than a tenth rounder. Yeah, the, the, the pay bracket would have been better. Right Either off way, the stop. It, it worked out okay. Yeah, well, I'd like I'd like to think that you've made up for it yeah. since then. Just so you know, maybe. Just so you know. Uh, so Mel will join us at the bottom of the hour. We'll do a little love it or shove it. Yes, coming up in just a little mm-hmm. bit. But why don't we get started with uh, what's trending? You ready? Mm-hmm. This is important. And how important this is is really the question. Tom Brady injured his hand, his right hand, when it was hit and jammed up against somebody in practice the other day. Now, a source close to Brady told our Mike Reese it's possible the right hand injury was sustained in a mild minor collision in practice Wednesday, and it could affect him slightly in the AFC Championship. Yeah, I mean, I, I, listen, I have no idea. what I doubt we'll ever find out what it, exactly it is. Hand, fingers, fingers leading into the hand, Head, shoulder, closer knees to the toes. wrist, who knows, upper body, lower body, Contusions. we don't know. But, but listen, I, I'll be honest, you know, if, if you know something's hurt on a player, now this is a little more difficult because normally a quarterback and a hand injury is kind of a fluky thing. Yes. Them following through on a pass, maybe hitting a D lineman or one of their own guys, a D lineman getting his hand up and you hitting that hand and jamming something or hitting it on a helmet. But listen, players see injuries all the time, and one of the reasons you rarely want someone to know is if you got something wrapped or something hurt, it's going to get tested. It's going to get hit. You know, it's going to get moved around a little bit. It's going to get checked on by the opponent. Uh, some people don't think that's a very cool thing, and my response to that is tough. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's just what we did and will always happen. Uh, but this isn't one of those type of injuries where you're going to say, let's go after the quarterback's hand. It's just, as I said, quarterbacks getting their hand hit is a fluky thing, so I have no idea how he hit it. Like I said, I doubt we will till after the season, or if there will be any effect at all, we will find out. Yeah, according to a report from the Boston Herald, the injury occurred when one of Brady's Teammates accidentally ran into him and jammed his hand. X-rays were taken, revealing no structural damage, according to the Herald. But again, you know, it's, I think what Adam said was very interesting. It's not a problem until it is a problem. How about that, though? How about if you were depending a lot of it depending on the player? If you're a star defensive player and you accidentally hit the star quarterback, you know, there, there's there's that uneasiness of oh my god, did you hurt him? Then well, it was, at least it was you know. But what if you're not a star? I mean, and and you you hurt. You know the the quarterback in practice before like an AFC Championship game. Tell you, Holy smokes! Tell you a quick story about that. Teddy Bruschi told me this story once. It was when Bledsoe got hurt in 2001. He was getting set to come back, and at that point, they thought that he was going to take the job over uh, from Brady. So Bledsoe was walking up onto the field, and Teddy came up behind him, sort of goose him with bah in his face, right? And Bledsoe like almost tripped and fell, and. Uh, Bruski was like, "Oh my God, what did I just do? I might have just hurt our franchise quarterback." He was he was very nervous that he might have done something wrong. Well, I, I, uh, Bill Curry came on the show and talked about when he was the center of the Packers for Bart Starr. Yeah, pregame they had a bad exchange and and popped his finger, and Bart Starr still played. I think he said the first drive took him down through a touchdown pass, and Bill Curry was like. Phew. Okay, yeah. Curry walked off, the, uh, or um, Barstar ran at the field, went to Vince Lombardi, I'm done, fingers gone, oh. can't play anymore. Bill, and he said, to Lombardi's credit, he never said a word to, to Bill about it. But man, yeah, what a, what a horrible feeling that's got to be. Yeah, luckily it turned out okay for the Patriots, yep. and it turned out okay for Barstar and Bill say. Curry. 
All right, breach gate penalties are out. Houston's Trevor Ariza and Gerald Green have been suspended two games apiece by the NBA for entering the Clippers, I'm sorry, breaching mm-hmm. the Clippers locker room on Monday. And uh, the other two players that were in the locker that went there as well, Chris Paul, James Harden, were seen as peacemakers and peacemaking roles, so they were not suspended and or fined in this one. Some of the Rockets a little upset that nobody from the Clipper or the um, the Clippers were suspended in this. They felt Blake Griffin made contact with the Rockets coach, but I, I knew we never saw any video of that, so it was a lot of interviewing going on. And it turns out uh, Trevor Ariza called um, Austin Rivers, who, again, was part of this, didn't play in the game, was in a coat and tie, but chirping from the sideline, and he and Ariza really going at it mouthwise back and forth. Uh, and Ariza called him and they had like a 30 minute conversation. And as Austin Rivers said, he, he proved to be a big, bigger man there making, making the call to me and we hashed things out. So out of all that, two players get suspended two games, cost him a little bit of money. Yep. Uh, but, but 50,000 a game for Trevor Ariza. Yeah. It cost him over, over a yeah. hundred grand. It'll cost, um, uh, Green, what, a little over 19 grand, I believe, Gerald Green. The good news is, as you said, if you're the Rockets, that uh, neither Chris Paul nor Harden, who's dealing with that hamstring anyway, will be suspended because the Rockets are 15-0 and this season when Harden and Chris Paul and Clint Capella all right. play, who, mm-hmm. by the way, was the diversionary yes, tactic. He was. Remember, they went, they breached because they went through the secret back door right, right. entrance uh, to the well, Clippers Capella knocked room. on the front door. Well, he was not, get he, their attention. He was, he was, the, dis- he was the distraction, mm-hmm. and then they swept around the flank. And thankfully, this will put an end to Breachgate. Thank you. And lastly here, uh, oh, by the way, in the locker room story, we have an update here. It was not Capella. Okay, so uh, by the way, it, 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 uh, according to uh, Mark Stein, on the locker room door part of the story, league sources say the commotion caused by Ariza and Green getting into the Clippers locker room was already underway and prompted Tariq Black, not Clint Capella, to approach the Clips' front entrance before being turned away. Ah, so new story, new they, news. New, so it lives. Right. Breachgate lives okay. with another twist and turn, which means we can talk. No, let's, we won't. Let's, let's just move it. on. Yeah. All-Star Game uh, starters will be announced tonight. LeBron was the leading vote-getter in the last release. Yeah, he was. So uh, He has uh, uh, been the leading vote-getter four times. Michael Jordan leads away with nine times. Uh, LeBron, though, going for his 14th straight All-Star Game start. That would take uh, break a tie with Bob Cousy, so they're tied at 13 right now. Tim Duncan, 12 straight uh, starts, and then Kobe Bryant, Julius Irving with 11. And remember, the top vote getter in each conference, they end up being captains, and they pick their right. teams this year like a, like a draft. And they de- they've done that a couple times uh, in the NHL, and those were public though. This one's going to be kept. This one's going to be so kept no one's private. feelings get yeah, hurt. No one's, uh, and th- they gave a different reason. I can't remember what it was, but, but the real reason I mean, is that no on. one's feelings will They're get hurt. They're all all stars, but yeah. nobody still wants to be picked last, even as an all star. Can confirm having been picked last on more than one occasion, and not even being an all star. Wasn't even close. <laughs> not even in kickball. All right, uh, it is time, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to do a little. It's time for another edition of Love It Booyah! or Shove It. I think go well. With Bullock and Wingo. All right, it is time for Love It and Shove It, brought to you by Granger. Bubba it's is it's here Love us. It or Shove It, thanks. Yeah, sure, Love It or Shove It, brought to you by Granger. Um, Granger. Like, diva. He's, he, he's listen, become a diva. All of a sudden, he gets talent next to his name, and, and he yeah. becomes tough to deal with. Did that, did that really actually happen? Or yeah, no, that's usually that's my little uh, fonting. It's Bubba Peregrine, talent. I hope they're doing it. Fortin, thanks. Do it. Are they doing it? Let me see it. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't either. I don't Quickly. I doubt we no, will. I don't see it. Yeah, we're not going to see right, it. You ready for this? <sighs> Fibers you're, must you're be ready down. To start? You yeah. ready to start? Yeah. Wait, ready. hold on. Cliff, you get the first question. Yep. All right. The Rockets being upset that no Clippers were suspended as a result of Monday night situation. Love it or shove it. Was, yeah, see, wow. you, you, uh, right. you took right. shots well, I'm just at Cliff. Go, cause this is, that's, you this took is shots joke. at Cliff for the board that's operator, a, so we're, we're going to back our guy. That was a smooth read by Cliff. Smooth back read. Yeah. Cliff, you're very good, good at that. Yeah. We should think about maybe incorporating you into Love It or Shove It. Would you, would I don't you, know. I mean, maybe I should take it over. Cliff, would you want to work with Bubba? Bubba, would you want to work with Cliff? I'm open to anything. Bubba, how about you? Not necessary. I got this covered. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Granger wants Diva. love it or shove it with me. Diva. Not this board op. Oh, hey, way God. to open the hour with Smash Mouth. What are you good. doing? He's wow. winning. Cliff is winning. Wow. All right. By the way, yeah, we get a beard off. <laughs> By the way, we have no idea what the question was again. Bubba, why don't you go ahead all and right. read the first question? But Cliff, yeah. you nailed it. Yeah, you did. The Rockets being upset that no Clippers were suspended as a result of Monday night's situation. Love it or shove it? I mean, listen, I can see it from their end, but but I shove this. I don't know what the Clippers did. If you can't prove that Blake Griffin elbowed the coach, 
what are you going to suspend them for? They didn't go to the Rockets locker room. The Rockets came to their locker exactly. room. So I don't really see. And a lot of it is just, you know, jabbing back and blah, forth. Blah, blah, blah. What are you getting suspended for? So I, I shoved that one. How, how dare I be in my, how dare I be in my locker room? Yes, exactly. Right? How, how city awful where, is that? Where I'm supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm totally shoving that one. But let's get the real talents question, uh, answer to that. Cliff, love it what or do you shove think? it? Shove it. You got to shove it. Yeah, there you, you go. Shove it. There you Simple go. As that. There you go. <laughs> the okay. steam coming off Brandon's the breakdown head. of that. With oh, that. Bubba is uh, really upset. All right, you ready? Go with the next right, one. Here we go. LeBron James saying this has been the most challenging season of his career. I love it or shove it. <sighs> I, I mean, listen, I, I'm not there, so I obviously don't know. But I understand, and the reason he's saying that is for all the games that players have missed, especially a guy like Isaiah Thomas, who's just coming back and getting in to the fold here of no continuity of guys being together on the court. I think hopefully they'll have enough of that by the playoff to get uh, that familiarity. But I I can, I can understand that because he prefaced it by saying because of all the injuries and the different rotations and starters. So I'll say, I love it. I love it too. Look, he's playing as best as he's ever played in terms of statistics. He's averaging, what, 27, almost nine uh, assists and eight boards a game, or is it eight eight? Either way, it's yeah. good. It's 8.8 8 and 8. Uh, so he's playing really well, but you're right. For for LeBron, it's not about how he's playing. It's about what this what this team is doing. And they're mired in a 3-9 and nine funk, so I love the fact. I'm going to love the fact that he's out there open and honest, and he wants to try and get it turned around. All right, Bubba. The Jaguars should put Jalen Ramsey on Rob Gronkowski. Love it or shove it? Uh, Rob Gronkowski is 6'6", 265 pounds, okay? So, now Jalen Ramsey is a great, great cover corner. Freak show. There's no doubt about that. But you have to, you know, size does matter, gang, in this one, okay? I'm going to say. Jalen Ramsey is 6'1", 208. That's what he's listed as. You look at their linebackers who are very athletic. Miles Jack is only 6'1", as well. At 244, he's bigger, though. Telvin Smith is 6'3", 215. So if Jalen Ramsey, and I think they're going to switch it up, and something I think a decent amount could be double coverage as well with help over the top on him. But Jalen Ramsey, while I think he could he could stay with Gronkowski, what happens when, when the ball's coming? One six one, one six six, one two sixty five, one two ten. I mean that that's a tough matchup for Jalen Ramsey. Even you could be covering him as well as you can cover anybody, but it may not matter. It may not matter. But at least your linebackers are a little bigger, and I think they're athletic enough to run with Gronk. But you know, in a matchup, I think Gronk overtakes all of them. So while I'll say I only would I would say I'd shove this. I think it's going to be different people that are going to be on him. Well, I think I'm going to I'm going to shove it too because I think Jalen will be part of it. I mean, Bill Polian yeah, came on the show and talked about they might want to use Ramsey in the same way the Bills used Tredavious White on Rob Gronkowski and sort of get under his skin. Aggravate him. And nobody's a better aggravator <laughs> That's true. in the NFL right now than Jalen Ramsey. But they're going to do a lot of different things. I think Telvin Smith and Miles Jack will be on Gronk a lot and, as well. And a lot of it is going to be, and you want to test it. You want to, you want to bang them uh, early, and you want to see if the rest are going to call it. How much are the rest going to get involved and yep. throw the flag? You want to get away for, uh, get away with as much as you can and try and aggravate them. It's kind of like Hack-A-Shack. Or, ha- exactly or hack right. Deion Jordan. Yeah, right. and, and, until they call it, keep doing it. And Bas- Tony Baselli, the greatest Jaguar of all time, was on with us earlier, and he said, "Let's not mess things up. Let's just let's do what they do defensively, and and they'll figure that out within their scheme. Our scheme is to go to Bubba one more time. Mm-hmm. Bill Belichick will miss his coordinators more than Nick Saban will miss his. Love it or shove it. Wow. So Matt Patricia looks like he'll be with the Lions, the D coordinator. Josh McDaniels, the O coordinator, the Colts. Nick Saban is looking for his fourth offensive coordinator in like a year. He's lost a couple of D coordinators. Kirby Smart uh, with at Georgia now, and now Jeremy Pruitt took off this year to go to Tennessee." Um, Bill Belichick will miss his coordinators more. We've seen the coordinator Saban's gone through, and he still won a national championship. Wow, that that Bubba, that's a really good question. That's a. Re- do you have a really good answer? I don't have. What do you What do you think? Uh, I think I'm going to shove that because I think hmm. Bill. Uh, I think Bill will find a way. He always does. I mean, remember after that Super Bowl, he lost Romeo Cornell and Charlie Weiss. Super Bowl thirty nine. And you know what happened? They kept winning. Now, it took them a while to win another Super Bowl, but they did actually have an undefeated yeah. season uh, after that. Uh, so, I, I, look, I'm not taking anything away from Saban, but I think Bill Belichick will do what he always does, find a way. And I think, I think Saban will, too, but I just, I just don't think that Bill's going to miss his coordinators. All right, I'll go with that. You talked me into it. it. I did? I'll love that as well. Yeah. Wow. I, I, I really, I'm really split down the middle on this one. I, I, I really am. Because uh, I, I think they both can overcome Then you want to shove it? Yeah. Or shall love it? 
Uh, Bubba won't let me do that, so I love it. Doug Marone not watching either of Tom Coughlin's Super Bowl victories over the Patriots. Love it or shove it. Marone says, I haven't watched them. Seriously, if I'm not in the Super Bowl, I usually don't watch it unless I have to. And that last line says it all. Why, why would he? What, yeah. what, what, are, what are the common players? You know that that you're watching there. Yeah, I, so I, I love the fact that he's not watching. Yeah, I mean, basically the only player that's been on the field for those two, last two Super Bowls would be Tom Brady. Tom Brady, yeah. The, the team has completely changed, and we all know that Bill Belichick does things differently every week based on the opponent he's playing. Right. I'm not sure what you can glean. From I, that. I agree, and again, the connection there with Tom Coughlin now working for Jacksonville. He was a coach yeah. when the Giants were doing that. But I, I, if there isn't a reason, just like Doug said, unless I have to. Didn't feel he had to for any X's and O's reason, so I have no problem with that at all. And that's a common theme, by the way, for coaches. Like Herm Edwards, as a player, got to one Super Bowl, right? lost it 27-10 uh, to the Raiders, and uh, he said, I haven't watched the Super Bowl since. Yeah. So I, I, unless I'm in it, I don't want to watch it. I don't, I don't want to be a part of it. I'm with you. So uh, Doug Marone is not alone in that mindset. All right, what else you got? Roethlisberger, Brady, Breeze will all still be playing in 2020. Love it or shove it? Hmm. In 2020, so that would be they played 2018, 19, 19. They have to go into their third year from now. Roethlisberger's contract expires after the 2019 season. Tom Brady's contract after the 2019 season, and Breeze is a free agent right now. Um, I, I, I've said all along. I said before this season, Brady three more, so that would be two more. Uh, which means that wouldn't be 2020, 2018, correct? 2018, 2019, you finish up then. Yeah, and so all of them going two more seasons in that third, I'm going to shove that one. I'm going to say they're not all going to be doing that. No. I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm going to shove it as well because we can talk about you know avocado, ice cream. You can want to all you want. All you want. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's only one thing that's the all-time undefeated champ, and that's time. Yep. We can postpone it. We can prolong the inevitable. You can't beat it. But you're never going to beat it. Yep. And I think at the end of the day, I'm not sure any of these guys will be playing in 2020, let alone all three of them. Wow, interesting. And that was all the love it or shove it questions. Interesting. We put up a question at Golick and Wingo. Yeah. Just four, or there's four minutes left in this one. Yeah, let's take a look at these fine results. What do you got? It, it, and basically the question is, are you Team Bubba, Team Cliff? Right, right, yeah. 70%, 77%. Team Bubba. Yeah. Well, I'm going to start autobotting the vote. Wow. Well, well, gonna... wow. I mean, it's not surprising. Clear. Cliff, how Clear. does that make you feel? Clear. All my voters are sleeping right now. Oh, there you so go. So all your voters aren't watching your work? That's, yeah, that's I mean, disappointing. That makes a lot of sense. You just, yeah, you just undermined your that own That really cause. did. Right? That was that really hurt you. I, mean, wow. I love you. Yeah. And I, I'm on your team. That did yeah, not help that you. That didn't help And by all. association, that did not help me. So yeah. I feel bad now. Good job, Bubba. You're the man still, well. Yeah, you're the king. How do you feel, talent? Feel the same. Yeah. Came in talent, leaving talent. With talent. <laughs> Still bored up. With talent with your name, has your pay been upped? Oh, it's been upped. Oh. oh, 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 oh. And Wait. a lot of that is thanks to Granger for the, one, for the ones who get it done. <laughs> uh, you're a smart man, You're Bubba. good. Yeah. Uh, you know, you, 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 you're no, good. Now get out. Yeah, no, well, I want him here to enjoy. You bring it in, Mel? Yeah, we're no, I'll stay a, here. Make it, no, Mel we, can sit over there. We want, we, want to, we want you to enjoy because you just did it. Bubba. And Love It or Shove It is brought to you by Granger, the products and service you need with Bubba when you need them. Granger's got your back, and Bubba's got Granger's back to help keep your facility running. Granger, what's the tagline, Bubba? For the ones who got it done, Bubba. Hey everyone, Mike Golick here. Support for the Golick Wingo podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. Rocket Mortgage is simple, allowing you to fully understand all the details and be confident you're getting the right mortgage for you. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, NMLS, consumeraccess.org number 3030. Hey guys, is it time to get your hair in the game? Time to claim your spot! Then it's time to check in online at sportclips.com slash check in for a fresh cut, legendary hot steam towel, and massaging shampoo. Time to claim your spot! So do your hair a favor by checking in online and arrive just in time for your Sport Clips MVP haircut experience while you surround yourself with sports on TV. Get in line online at sportclips.com slash check-in. Time to claim your spot! Golik and Wingo here with you on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. 
And then every once in a while, we're graced in studio with the likes of this man, uh-huh. our draft expert, Mel Kuyper Jr. Joins us in studio, giving us the straight talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, best phones, best networks, no contracts. Mel, delighted to see you in person, my friend. How are you? The Browns are on the clock when I hear that. That's exactly I know when I hear that. <laughs> but I know when, when you say that, Trey, I know we're ready to roll. Looking yep. forward to what's going to be a really fun three days in Frisco, Texas, when the Dallas uh, Cowboys will be the official host team of the uh, – of the draft in April, we're looking forward to that. And you're right, uh, you have your first mock draft out there, and the Browns are on the clock. They have the first and the fourth pick, and like a lot of people thinking, Mel, they're going to go. You have them going quarterback and running back with those picks, but the first pick I think would surprise a lot of people. It's not Josh Rosen. It's not Sam Darnold. You have them taking Josh Allen, the quarterback out of Wyoming. Why? Well, I think physical ability. You know, you look at the prototype in oh. terms of size, arm, mobility, competitiveness, and you're the Cleveland Browns, and you're playing outside in inclement weather. You're playing in Cincinnati, Baltimore, and Pittsburgh, and you have to have that type of skill set. He did it at Wyoming in Laramie, and certainly uh, late in the year, you think about the shoulder, but he came back from that, played in their bowl game, and did a great job. <laughs> Made every NFL throw imaginable, led his team to a victory. When the two games he missed, they lost to Fresno State, who he wanted to play against. That's where he's from, and Fresno State overlooked them coming out of that area. Then San Jose State, who did not have a good year at all, was a bad football team, beat Wyoming without Josh Allen. He comes back and they beat Central Michigan. So his value was huge to this program. And uh, I know they lost some key guys. Yeah, they and, did. And you can't reload. This is Wyoming. This isn't uh, you know a major power that can just all of a sudden plug great players in after great players leave. And that's why you saw some struggles early in the year from Josh Allen. He's a guy, when you look at when he went against teams that finished with at least seven wins, his, his completion percentage was 50%, mm-hmm. four touchdowns and five interceptions. In the other six games, 12 touchdowns, one interception, mm-hmm. 62% completion. Yeah. That's the one thing, and, and, and I've said it many times, and I believe it. You can't always look at numbers. I look at, and I'm sure you do too, and what scouts and GMs do and coaches, what's transferable. And the one thing that does give me pause is accuracy. Mm-hmm. Now, a lot of times you have to look at films, what was dropped mm-hmm. and all that as well, but accuracy can be a concern because what can work at the next level? What can you fix? Can you help a guy with progression? Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and different things in the pocket, and then there's accuracy. That was a big question about Deshaun Kaiser, but he fit that bill of a big, good-looking quarterback, but there was a question of accuracy, and unfortunately it was realized mm-hmm. in the NFL, which is the reason the Browns are doing this yet again. So that's my concern, is his accuracy, Mel, and can that be fixed at the next level? I think that's one of the harder things to fix. Well, it is, because you think about the Iowa game, and I said this back in August, long before the Iowa game, Ben Roethlisberger played at Iowa. And he looked bad. He right. actually came on the radio with us on ESPN Radio and took full responsibility and did not play well, but he was overmatched. Miami, Ohio was overmatched right. by Iowa. Wyoming was overmatched by Iowa and Josie Jewell, who we'll be talking about in late <laughs> April, and several of the Josh Jackson in their corner overmatched that team. You think about the guys they lost, center Chase Rulier, mm-hmm. running back Brian Hill, tight end Jacob Hollister, wide receiver Tanner Gentry, all in the NFL. So Wyoming's not going to replace them automatically. And it took some time, and he got better. To the point about the completion percentage, I went back to 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL. Their college completion percentage into their career, everybody was higher than that except one. Josh McCown was at 54.8. Everybody else was above 56.2. Mm-hmm. You think about Jake Locker, 54%. Bust. Kyle Bowler, 48.8. Bust. So there is a, 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 a concern right. with that completion percentage. But, again, it's Wyoming against some better – even though it's the Mountain West, there's still teams better than them pet talent-wise – Weather conditions always a factor mm-hmm. there as well. And the way he finished the year against Central Michigan coming back from that shoulder, he finished strong. The other quarterbacks didn't. That's right? one we're playing in that. You got these guys missing the bowl game where he, he feel he I, could have sat out that game. But, but I think he was right to go in it because I think he did have that, that iffy year to where, you know what? I'm going to go in there and play and in this one. He had a shoulder yeah. that he came yeah. back from. Could have been rusty, right? Coming right. back and you know the weather's not going to be great. Bottom line is he played the game. He's going to play at the senior bowl. Mm-hmm. He's going down to Mobile. He didn't have to do that. He's right. an underclassman, but he's still able to go with graduation. So, to me, Josh Allen finished a strong Sam Donald did not against Ohio State no, play not. well, and he did not have a great year. And Josh Rosen, 32 day, oh, days in concussion protocol, then all of a sudden not wanted to play, can't play, had the shoulder surgery two years ago. There's some durability concerns there. So I went with the quarterback guys that finished the strongest and fits what the Browns need in terms of the weather to deal with and the size and the physicality of that quarterback. Mm-hmm. And then knowing at four... They can get the running back or a defensive back like Micah Fitzpatrick. Mel Kuyper Jr. with us. Uh, again, he'll be on NFL Live with us today and part of a Sports Center special tonight on ESPN2 from 7 to 9. Uh, 
Now, again, I just want to be clear. This is who you think they should take, not who you think they will take, correct? This is who I think they will take. This is who I think they will take. Right. This okay. is not. This is a mock draft, not a ratings of what right, I think. Right. Or, or Todd's not going to come and say, well, I would have done this. It's about right. what the teams will do. Okay. So if you're hearing something from a team, then make it part of your mock. Or let me know. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking for anything. I have all ideas and opinions. Bring them this way. He's a sponge. What, but the bottom line is... We don't know what free agents are going to leave. We don't know right, what free agents right. are that's coming. That's the thing that's so really needs, going to change needs are this. created, guys. That needs are created that we don't know right now. Yeah. Needs are filled based on free agency. So this that, that's why this is a fluid thing. But it gets what I want to do is get the names out there, put them in positions, and arrange where I think they will go. Well, while people know this name, he's this name I'm mm-hmm. going to say is not as well known as the, in the first five picks for our – Highly known names. Three of them quarterbacks. Josh Allen, Josh Rosen, who you have going to the Giants. Number four, you have Saquon Barkley going to the Browns. If they get a quarterback and Saquon Barkley, that's going to be huge. Everybody's just going to think they're going to get the wrong quarterback because they've done it all the time. they got to hope to hit that one. And then number five at Denver, you have Sam Darnold going. Number three, mm-hmm. you have the Colts taking Bradley yeah. Chubb. Now, I saw him pass rush against Notre Dame when they played them, mm-hmm. and I've seen him pass rush for the last couple of years. Love him. I can't believe when they drop him into coverage a few times. I just don't understand that whole thing. Uh, but talk about him for a minute. Number three, the pass rusher to the Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, and I would like to have had an offensive line, but there's none. So you yeah. can't force it. So why didn't you have him take in this position? Well, there's nobody to take at that spot. You think about what Bradley Chubb brings is – and they talked about it with Miles Garrett. So, well, he takes some plays off. Nobody's going to say that about Bradley Chubb. Right, no. Nobody. Dave Dorn came on with Darian and I on the radio about a month ago. And I asked him about Chubb. He said, all I can tell you is, Mel, he sprints on the practice field every day. I've never seen that. And he sets the tone. You talk about tone setters for everybody else on that team. It's like the kid Bennett from Tennessee who went to Philadelphia, the, the pass rusher. Derek Barnett. Barnett. I'm Derek sorry, Barnett. Derek Barnett. Yeah. I'm sorry. Who, who Derek took Barnett. Reggie White's name out of the Tennessee who, who, record book for most sacks. He's 100 miles an hour all the time. And that's as the way well. he is. Yeah. And right. Chubb for the Colts, I think that's certainly a guy you could say, hey, you could make an argument. He's the best player in the draft. You could really make a strong argument on Bradley Chubb. You could make a strong argument on Micah Fitzpatrick. You could make an argument on Barkley. And to get back to Barkley with the Browns, Bill Polian is going to be joining us tonight on the Sports Center special, seven and I with Todd and Wendy Nix tonight. Well, who did Bill draft? He drafted Peyton Manning. Who did he get the next year? He got Edger and James. James, The quarterback running back back back-to-back years in one swoop. In one year, they can get their quarterback running back. Ironically, though, who was the last bust running back in the top group? Trent Richardson. Trent Richardson, the Cleveland Browns. Exactly. Right. And Brandon Whedon was later that same so, draft. I mean, it's, so. it's the Cleveland Browns, so you got to kind of – but John Dorsey, we know what a great GM he yes. is. He's running a show in Cleveland. If you can get the quarterback and the running back, and you can. And remember, we talked about Barkley, arguably the best player in the draft. They're picking four and get him. Yeah. So if he didn't go four, wouldn't the Jets like to see him at six? Well, you know, come on. There's a lot of teams who would like to get a, Saqu- a Saquon Barkley mm-hmm. early in the first round. As Mel is with us here, his first mock draft is out. You can see the whole thing on ESPN.com and on his Twitter feed as well. Uh, let's talk about the two New York teams because the Giants have the second overall pick mm-hmm. for only the second time in franchise history. Mm-hmm. As you well know, the last time they had the second pick, they got Lawrence Taylor. They got that one right. You have them taking the quarterback, Josh Rosen. Do you see him as... Uh, a guy who will sit for a year behind Eli Manning and then develop into the next franchise guy? Could, uh, or he's so smart. And uh, Jed Fish, that's the smartest quarterback I've ever been around. And ever. NFL co- ever been around is Josh Rosen. Now, has he rubbed some people the wrong way? Yeah. I didn't think coming out and saying I don't want to be in Cleveland was a, a thing you should do. No. I mean, this is a guy coming off two years of shoulder surgery two years ago, the concussion protocol this year, two concussions. I think he's just got to go wherever he is. Darnold said, I'm honored to go wherever I want to go. Uh, with Rosen, I say artistic. If you watch him throw the football, the way he spins it, the tight spirals, the catchable ball, the way he throws with anticipation, uh, you know, the way he maneuvers in the pocket, he's NFL ready. He's more NFL ready than any of these guys. I think he throws the best out of the ball. Oh, he throws a great yeah. ball. Yeah. Throws a great, now he doesn't have the howitzer for an arm. No, he doesn't. But it's good enough. And, and he just, I say artistic throwing the ball. Picture perfect throwing the football is Josh Rosen. So you, you have four quarterbacks going in the first round. The fourth would be at 13, Washington and Baker Mayfield. How about Mason Rudolph? You don't have him in the first round. So talk about mm-hmm. two guys, him and then yeah. the big X factor, mm-hmm. Lamar Jackson. Yeah, two guys I thought yeah. about. Yeah, you thought about spots, but what happens in 25 to 32 is usually a trade back exactly. in. I can't project that. I know. We, no, Todd, no, when we do mocks, you can't project these trades. So you say, okay, could a team go in to get Mason Rudolph late? So could they go back in to get Lamar Jackson? Sure they could. Uh, but to say they're automatic, and this is talking to people. Like, this is not what I, I would say for mock drafts, it's not what we think, it's what they think. We're not one of the third. You have to talk to people in the league. And the consensus now is borderline first. Some people are looking at Lamar Jackson as a wide receiver. Why? Because he's got a, a lot of talent. And he completed 57% career. Okay, He wasn't at 63, 64, and I don't know the answer. Either. I don't know the answer to this. Is he going to the, to the combine? And if he is, it, will he practice at another position? I've been told. Now, we'll see. But 
he wants to be a quarterback. Yeah, I know that. He wants to be a quarterback. And that was the whole Tebow thing. You know, you're going to be an eight. No, I want to be a quarterback. Right. Well, you know, you got to be open that. Terrell Pryor was a quarterback turned wide receiver. Exactly. Now, will Lamar Jackson, we'll see what he can do. If we can't develop him, we have that fallback. Right. To maybe making him a wide receiver. So I think that's something we'll have to see how it evolves. But if you're drafting me in the late first, early second round, you're drafting him as a quarterback. quarterback. You don't draft a projection. No, you do not. Yeah, Antoine ran the well one high because he went down to senior bowl and he lit it up as a receiver return man. That's not going to be happening with Lamar Jackson. Okay, then the other quarterback that I think is going to be the most polarizing guy in the first round is Baker Mayfield. Mm-hmm. Look, it, play, people love his competitiveness. Uh, they love the, the, the way he plays, the fire with which mm-hmm. he plays. But there are going to be some people, Mel, that look at Baker and say, well, you know, we've seen some things that sort of are Manziel-esque. And that clearly that did not work out for Johnny, also drafted by the Cleveland Browns. Um, what is your take on what the perception is of Baker at the NFL level? I think people love his competitiveness, love how he galvanizes the team, the players, the coaches, everybody goes to bat for him. They love him. They'll do everything positive about Baker Mayfield, the way he throws the football on the move, in the pocket. You think about accuracy, precise passing. He has that. Passes batted down for being six feet tall. You don't see that. Mm-hmm. So does he have a Russell Wilson frame? Is he going to be Russell Wilson? Is he fast More- enough to be Russell Wilson? Well, the way he moves around, the way he – on game day when you watch him play – He's a guy that almost wills his team to victory, and you say, "Well, what happened in the playoff game? He got stung. He got hit in that he game, did. and he looked. You can look like a boxer. You say he got stung. He kind of hurt him, and you could see it. Something hurt him, and they went away from him late. And I was critical yep. of Lincoln Riley going away from Rodney Anderson, who was having a great game, the running back, going away from Baker Mayfield, putting the ball in the hands of two guys that hadn't touched the ball. But Baker wasn't Baker at the end of that game. But when he is Baker Mayfield, somebody, and I said mid first round, I think Washington at thirteen. If you can't get Cousins deal done. Then you move on maybe to Baker. That's a hot spot, though, for a trade because nobody really fits Washington. So you got Arizona at 15. That's a place where somebody jumps up like Kansas City did for Patrick Mahomes, like Houston did for Deshaun Watson. Watson. That's kind of the hot spot for maybe a Baker Mayfield slide up for somebody to get him. He got his eyes watered in that game. He there's did. no mm-hmm. doubt about it. But I don't think there's from the quarterback position, there's another one that, that has just that intangible it factor, factor. Yeah. of just – you know he's a magnet to a leader to 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 the players, and I, he's one I really want to keep my eye on. Now to the point about the antics, we yeah. have to go away. I think he's got. He needs, has to, he's, yeah, I don't he's think the, he's going to do much of that at that level. Yeah, you, you hope he, he down puts that. There. That stuff's yeah. got to go. You got to be the CEO. I think he understands. Be professional, classy. Be the quarterback that everybody knows. Hey, we're not going to get that three o'clock a.m. call about anything that's going right. on here. Right. So I think if he can solidify that in the interview process and and reconcile everybody's reconciled to the fact that he is mature and he's learned from his mistakes then you can take him in the mid-first round. The it factor is nice. The performance factor would be better. Winning at sports and at sports broadcasting means changing things up. Just like La Quinta Inns and Suites is changing up their look. A renovated lobby that's so contemporary it even makes Golic look cool. Yes, it does. And a totally updated fitness center that even has Wingo feeling like a workout. I'm ripped. Plus, plenty of comfortable spaces to hang out. Yeah, this La Quinta look definitely has a vibe of victory. So you can just relax, refresh, and get ready for your next big meeting. Prepare to win at business with La Quinta Inns and Suites. Book now at LQ.com. We are thrilled that Mel Kuyper has decided to stay with us as we go through his first mock draft. How many are you going to do this year, you think? Five. Okay, so this is the fir- this is twenty percent of your mock draft right here. <laughs> well, yeah. they are strategically. They are, but then you've got your your uh, other ones too. What's the other? It's the solid gold. No, what are the, what are the other ones you do? There's the mock drafts, and then there's the other things. There's you the do. ones where we pick who we would take the grade A draft, grade A draft, grade A yeah. draft, and Todd and I do our rotating right. through. And we so do there's, all, there's five they, mocks, but there's many yeah, other. And they things come on we'll after doing. the senior bowl. This is after the underclassmen declares the mock right. one. Then we have after the senior bowl, after the combine, then after all the free agency and the pro days, and then the day before the draft. That's yeah, all okay. the five are, are scheduled out. So we've talked. Talk quarterbacks. We we've talked. We'll get to running backs too in a second. Let's as get well. to the real players. We talked to the, about the first. Well, the real players are the D line, but we talked Offensive about linemen. Bradley Chubb, the first D lineman that that according to Mel will go in this draft. And then there's O lineman and guards don't get drafted usually in the top ten an awful lot. But you have one. Uh, what could arguably be the best lineman in the country this year, Quentin Nelson from Notre Dame. You have him going number seven to Tampa Bay. Yeah, Tampa Bay twenty seventh in the NFL in per carry average. They were three seven a carry. Quentin Nelson is a guy who can come in. He's a plug and play guy. You talk about yeah. Zach Martin coming yep. out as a mid first rounder, what he meant to that Dallas Cowboy offensive line. And I thought about Tampa Bay, thought about San Francisco. 
You mentioned the Indianapolis Colts. Well, hey, if you think he's going to be great, why not take him way up there in that rarefied air of the top five? You could. But I thought uh, the two the teams that I projected him to when I did the various mocks leading into the first mock, when you're just kind of you know penciling it in, it was Tampa Bay and San Francisco I thought would make the most sense for Quentin Nelson. Okay, by the way, the last time a guard was drafted in the top ten was 2013. We had two of them. Yep. Jonathan Cooper went seventh overall to Arizona. That didn't work out. Mm-hmm. Then he went to New England. He's actually played very well yeah, for the Dallas, Dallas Cowboys, Cowboys this year. In that left guard. And yeah. Chance Warmack went at 10, and he's been okay. He mm-hmm. hasn't been something you would think as a top 10 pick. Quentin Nelson, I mean, if you drew up a guard, oh my gosh. that's what he's going to look like. I love you know, he reminds he finishes me of, every play. We always do these comps. So yeah. Who's the guy right? Steve Hutchinson. Yes. yes. There the you old go. Michigan Wolverine. Yep. By the way, is, I think Hutchinson's a pro football Hall of Fame finalist. Yes, he is. Mm-hmm. So that Absolutely would be a very is. good comparison. Yeah, it would. I bet Quentin would like that comparison. <laughs> keep saying that, guys. Keep saying that. All right, let's, let's, we talked about the quarterbacks and Saquon Barkley. Let's go through this list of guys you have in the first round. Give me the one name that a lot of people don't know that maybe they should know, and this guy you think is really going to be a dominant player. Who oh, is it? Marcus Davenport out of Texas San Antonio, pass rusher. Green Bay desperately needs that. He can play on his feet. I watched him do that. He, certainly with his hand on the ground, he can get after. He's got length. He's got a takeoff. Uh, he's the kind of guy that people haven't heard enough about. Senior Bowl, obviously they will. Colton Miller, the offensive tackle from UCA, le- L.A. left tackle, came off an injury. He did a great job. It's at 6'8", about 315, so laid on his feet. I got him in the late first round. He can go a little bit higher than that after all said and done. And then Brian O'Neill, the tackle from Pitt, former tight end. Yes. Don't you, offensive line coaches love former tight ends. I think O'Neill's got a touchdown or two yeah. at, at Pittsburgh. Yeah. 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 Jason yeah. Peters and Lane Johnson. Actually, yeah. Lane started out as a quarterback at Oklahoma. Remember Wayne Andy Heck? Not. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Heck yeah, I remember Andy <laughs> Heck. Um, what about the t- some of the guys that we saw uh-huh. in the national championship game? Uh, Deron Payne, the defensive mm-hmm. tackle. We mentioned Mink already, but Deron Payne and Roquan Smith, those two guys. Roquan, I thought the John Gruden and the, and the Oakland Raiders. And he could be the centerpiece. You got a Khalil That'd be Mack, number 10. That'd be Irvin, the 10 all of a sudden, pick. up the gut, the belly of the defense. They were a little soft. I think Roquan could be the leader. You got Khalil Mack coming from the outside. Uh, added the Carl Joseph a few years ago. I think that would solidify your, the interior of your defense up the middle with the middle linebacker spot. I think when you look at, at the, the, uh, the Deron Payne, Deron Payne this year did what Marcel Darius did, certainly did what, you know, Robinson and, and Reed did only better, even though he didn't have the sack numbers. He was disruptive. And people look at the stats and pain and say, how can you take this guy high? He didn't do anything. Right. Look at the tape. Watch how disruptive he was and the athleticism of a big man. Uh, I think for a team like the Chargers that were soft in the belly as well, that would really give them something they need at that the defensive tackle. You said tackle it perfectly. Spot. The interior D lineman, mm-hmm. it's disruption. That That's exactly what you're looking for. As far as running backs, did Bryce Love make the right move going back? Where did you have him ranked? A little surprise at Bryce Love. It's great, it's great for Stanford. Yeah. You know, David Shaw, you think about Bryce Love, the game breaking home run hitter, even though he had the ankle, he still put up big numbers late. I would have had him say, where would he have gone? I think he would have gone 20 to 32. Mm. In the first round, because you see what Alvin Kamara has done. Right, right. Alvin Kamara caught the ball. That wasn't something. Bryce didn't. Bryce, Bryce had six catches. Exactly. And that's where maybe they want to get him more exactly. involved, get those numbers up to 25 yep. catches instead of, of you know, under 10, get it maybe 25 to 30, add to that versatility, make him more of a multi-dimensional guy, maybe get him into the top 15. So if he says, hey, 20 to 32, early second, now I can become a top 15 guy. There's reasons to become a more complete player by going back to Stanford. The only concern then is the wear and tear you get on a running back. And there'll be about 300 touches he'll have with, with hopefully catches yeah. and runs, a possibility of injury as 263 well. 263 carries last yeah. year. But again, Bryce Levin and the two defensive linemen also went back that you had in the top 20, right? Oh, for yeah. Clemson? For Clemson. Everybody went back. Yeah. The only unreal. ones didn't. Van Smith, the safety, yeah. didn't. But if you think about getting Kendall Joseph linebacker and getting the guys they got back to come unreal. Farrell, yeah. getting Farrell back, getting Austin Bryant back. Come on. Ridiculous. Woo. I mean, just ridiculous. Mel, the first of many times we'll have this Thanks, discussion Mel. leading up to the draft at the end of April. We'll see you on NFL Live later on today. Uh, that'll about do it for Golden mm-hmm. Wingo today. Tomorrow we'll have A.J. Boye, cornerback of the go. Jags. Darren Woodson will be here, Sal Pal. Plus, we will grill Golick oh, yeah. and play over under. We'll see you on Friday. Thanks for watching and listening. Hello. I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay. And what's my account balance? Ah, oh, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to GEICO. I see a yellow-eyed serpent and a low APR. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.